it was the hardest thing. It was harder than prison to not only lose your your partner, your rock, but your best friend. It was it, it was it was all gone. So that was hard to come out of prison and carry on alone. That was the hardest part. But as time went on, um, as time went on, you, you seem to. Sorry, man. You seem to. So stop looking at distractions because that's all they are and they'll ultimately fuel disappointment because when you when you try something new you will fail but fail big fail humongously but move on and don't be afraid to fail because if you never fail you'll never succeed you'll never feel the gratitude of success and it'll just bypass you so don't be scared to think outside the box because the old IQ test was drawing a few lines. But the only way to draw them lines together was to go outside the box. So do it. And don't be scared of doing it because the only person that holds you back ultimately is yourself. If you do enjoy this episode, please do take a minute to go over to our YouTube channel, be here now with Jay France podcasts and documentaries and please do hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be updated with all the latest interviews and content on the page. I hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for watching. How you doing, everyone? You okay? You're okay. Yeah, How good. you doing, man? Not too bad, man. Thank you for coming on uh, and being my first guest. No um, and um, I've, I've researched some of your story, and uh, it's uh, I've got to say it's pretty fascinating. But so I'm really looking forward to um, to, to to getting into this. So uh, let's start from the beginning, then, Paul. So um, where did you um, where did you grow up? Right, um, I grew up in a small town called Tamworth which is located just outside Birmingham in the Midlands. Um, I've got to admit, we had a great childhood. Um, I'm glad I grew up in the 80s. It was all good. We had, um, we had a great time. Um, and I know, but to be honest, I never thought back then I'd be where I am today. Um, and with the story I'm about to share with you guys um, and just how I got there, um, it was never intended to happen. Um, but somehow it came true. So um, I just hope it helps you and get to wherever you want to get to, like it helped me. Excellent. So, um, and what was life like growing up? Uh, have you got like siblings and stuff like that as well? Yeah, I've got a sister. Um, it was a great childhood. Um, my mum and dad gave us everything we wanted or that they could give us. Um, plenty of bike rides and summer's days fishing. So it was quite idyllic. Um, and I was lucky to be growing up in such a, a safe town like Tamworth. It was, it was, it was safe. It was, it was good. It was happy. And um, I had a great childhood. I went to a good school, and um, I had some. I've got some. I've got some great memories of of growing up in Tamworth. Cool. Was you always interested as a as a child of, of working in the arts and stuff like that, or working as, no, as no, an actor? No, no, no. As an as as far as an actor would go, um, it was just a boyhood dream that I used to, we used to get films off the video man, um, a guy that used to come around in a, in a brown cavalier, and he used to, we used to make films off him out of his boot, and um, it was every Friday night, my dad would let me pick a film, so um, we pick, I picked this, several different ones, um, and then we just sit down, and, and obviously we just watch them together, so... I always said to my dad when I was young, I always wanted to be um, an Arnold Schwarzenegger or um, yeah. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone in Rocky or something like that. And my dad says you can be whatever you want to be. Um, but like I say, it was just it was just a dream. Um, I was more into my football, if I'm honest. And football took me to over to America. So I went over to America to play football. I didn't quite make it to the standard 
I thought or wanted to get to. Um, so yeah, it was mainly it was mainly my football that was I grew up playing. No accident. Cool, excellent. Yeah, every um, childhood dream in it, boys dream for be, being a being a footballer and stuff as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. yeah. Do you know what we what we did? We used to play. We used to play until we woke up in the morning until we couldn't see the ball of an evening. So, um, and then we probably have a game of tracking. Um, so yeah, I've got some great memories, man. I've got, I've got to admit. Cool, excellent. So you on today as well to um to talk about um going through some bad times as well, and then and then turning it turning it around as well. So. Um, when do you think, um, uh, can you take us back to uh, when your story began, really? Um, from, from what my st- Yeah, my story, I'd probably say began, uh, I'd probably say 2011, um, or no, we probably go back to 2009, um, where I committed the offence, which was fraud, um, that got me sent to prison. Um uh, before that, I'd never been I'd never been in trouble before, so it was it was just something that when I came back from the US, um, I had no money, and someone offered me a get rich quick scheme, and it wasn't it really wasn't, and it landed me in a whole lot of trouble. But we'll get to there. Yeah, would you um, say that was um, just a time of your life that you was in? Um, people can make decisions uh, upon, like you know, fi- like you said, financially or not being where they want to be or, or influence as well all these all these things have a factor oh, yeah on. yeah man you can label it what you want but obviously everyone you meet in your lifetime will obviously have an influence but it's up to you how much they have an influence over your life so it could be a big influence I'm talking about influences my my co-star my co-actor grant crooks has just turned up so okay <laughs> <laughs> timing grant um <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. Yeah, That's but, right, um, no every, every, every person, every person's influence will, depending on how much you let them into your life, will either have a good impact or bad impact. And the people that I was hanging around at the time um, didn't have my best interests at heart. They weren't really friends, um, which ultimately led to me making the wrong decisions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And what was the? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what what, what was the sentence like? What was the? How long did you did you get? For sentence that? was two and a half years. Okay. Um, yeah. Two and a half years I was sentenced to. I, I mean, I, bearing in mind, I, I'd gone guilty from the start, so I didn't have to stand trial. I didn't want to put my family or anyone through it. So I'd done wrong. Um, I admitted my guilt. And for nearly two years, that was that, you know. I yeah. didn't hear nothing um, until it was time for me to um, just face my sentence. So... In my head, uh, because it had been so long, I thought, you know, the worst wasn't going to happen. And, uh, yeah, and that Friday afternoon, it it did. Okay, yeah. So, um, can we um, now go into, so how did that feel when, um, you know, like you said, you come from a, a background where uh, you've not really been... In trouble with the law and you've and it's and it's all it's all been kind of um you know clean up until that and to that point and then how did it feel of getting to that age and then um and then now having to face going to 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 prison like how did that how did you how did you feel about that at the time to be honest um it wasn't it wasn't just me that suffered it was my mum had a breakdown my dad had a stroke, um, a sister um, was beside herself. So I dragged a hell of a lot of people down with me. It wasn't just me. Um, and I went to Winston Green, which was a, a prison in central Birmingham. So being a guy, a lad from Birmingham, I knew I knew exactly what, what it was. And I never thought I'd be on the other side of that wall, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I was um it's so on that friday that. yeah sorry go, on, go, go ahead sorry man um, on that friday when i was on the way in that van i was lost man i was just a shell of who i once was you know i'd lost everything i'd lost um every sense of the person that I, I, I grew up to be you know i took my eye off everything yeah, yeah, and like you said, it impacts so many um, different people as well, uh, not just your, um, 
yourself when you make make a decision at the time as well like it sounds like it had a big impact on your uh, family and friends and that as well um at the time um yeah so uh, what was what was prison life like then was it uh how did you handle it how did you what what was uh yeah how did you get on this with it in there, inside this i'll say jay this is um this is uh, this is this is where my, this is where my journey began um on that one i went in on a friday so i was on like an induction wing so i didn't really see anybody until the monday and i was put onto the um the main wing um i got my, my i got my cell non sacked my tv went um uh, they took the mattress um everything else that they wanted to take they took um, and I remember queuing for dinner one night and there was a guy, I was meant to have ordered my dinner on the machine and I didn't, and I didn't know I had to. So, um, I, I, I was, I, you know, I, I was hungry, I had nothing to eat and he looked at me and he says, um, this guy's not on the list, but give him some food anyway. Anyway, the guy on, on the surf reef was like Green Mile. He was the biggest black guy I'd ever seen. He was huge. Um, fellow prisoner and I thought there's no way there's no way he's going to give me anything but he did he gave me everything and more and I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't have been so much grateful at the time you know and when I was on my way back to the cell um, I got tripped over and my dinner went all over the floor so I had two choices then I could either just walk away or hit the person that had took all my stuff who had now tripped me over. So I was going to hit him as hard as I could with a tray and um, that was what I was going to do until the guy who had given me the food come and pick me up off the floor and told me to go back to my cell and he will bring me my dinner. Anyway, safe to say I didn't I never see. I, ne I never saw them people again. But he, he came. He came into my cell, bought me my dinner, and he asked me to do three things for him. I thought, wow, this is still Monday. This cannot be happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he says, one, when it's exercise time, I, I want to see you out of your cell. I don't want to see you sitting around. I went, okay. I said, what's the second? It says the second is you're a big lad. I want to see you in the gym. Um, and I was scared. I was still what about them guys? He went, don't worry about them. I was, I'll just get used to someone to take you to the gym. Just not what I expected. And he said then the third, he said, is that your Bible? For some, for some for some reason, I don't know how it got there. I'll be honest. But I had my Bible, and he, um, I was going to say no. I'll be honest, Jay, um, but I didn't. In a really quiet voice, I said, yeah, it's mine. And he says, good, because you'll need it. Um, I'll take. I'll get someone to take you to the chapel every Sunday. And then with that, he he got up and walked away. Um, and for the time I was in Winston Green, I was really, I was really okay. I struggled with being there, obviously, but as far as anything bad happened, it it really didn't. Yeah, that's uh. So so you found um the faith in that in that Bible quite early on. Then, like, would you like like that was quite an a turning point for you? Then was it at that at the time? And like you said, like I'll be honest. Yeah, I'll be honest. Before I went to prison, um, I gave my life to Christ, thinking that for some supernatural reason it was going to save me. You know. Um, so I, I think I got baptised for the wrong reasons but at the right time for the wrong yeah. reasons if you know what I mean so um, when I went to prison it was I thought oh wow and was, <laughs> I don't know how am I going to get through this but he didn't abandon me I always had a passage I don't know if, you've, if you're aware of it it's called Footprints and, okay. Um, 
I've, I've always had it on my wall, and I just thought I've always I've always had it there because it sounded good, you know. But now, when I look back in my life in prison, and there's only, and there's only one set of footprints because I collapsed to my knees in in court. So he carried me all the way, all the way through my sentence. So I can now relate to that in such a way that it will never be far from me. But anyway, before we get to that, um, I spent four, four and a half weeks in Winston Green and then went to an open prison where I served the rest of my sentence in there. Now I'm feeling with this lockdown thing stuff, you you get a lot of thinking time to to see what you're you're going to be doing in in the future and stuff like that as well. Would you say that you you had uh, was you thinking over what you're going to do when you come out and stuff? While I was in prison, um, I got the chance because I was zero risk. Um, you have an assessment. I, I could go out to college and stuff and and learn. So because it was the only course available, I just took business studies. You know, just to something to do you know try and get a normal life as as as, as much as I possibly could yeah so i was going to a college just outside bristol um every day um and i was only coming back to the open prison just really to sleep and eat like i would do at home so um i was quite blessed in that aspect and every sunday i was getting visitors and so so it was good um well as best it could be anyway but when I left prison, um, while I was in there, I've always been one for sleeping, and you know, I always, <laughs> I was always same sleeping. Here, <laughs> Honestly, mate, I was a nightmare. And everyone was saying, "You're going to be late on your release," and I was like, "That's never going to happen." And I was, you know, <laughs> I, I, I didn't wake up, so everyone was waiting in reception to be released, <laughs> and obviously they couldn't because I was still in bed. So <laughs> I was, it actually happened. I couldn't oh, believe man. it, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was like walking into reception, <laughs> putting my coat on, and I was like, I was like, I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> and they was going, I knew you would do it. I, I, honestly, I knew you'd do it. And I was like, I am so, so sorry. <laughs> um, so not, not a lot of trouble with sleep yeah, um, when, you went, <laughs> when you went in. <laughs> not a lot of trouble with sleep, man. No. No. <laughs> um, but I've, um, when, when that There's happened, a book for you there, isn't there? <laughs> Write a book on that. <laughs> How to sleep in prison? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, man, it was. Um, you couldn't. Have, you couldn't have. You couldn't have wrote it any better. So it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was, uh, it was funny. It was funny. Cool. So um, when you um, when you come out of prison, then um, and um, can you take us from there? What it was. What, what life was like then? Yeah. So we're coming up to Christmas of 2012, going into 2013 at this point. Um, so we enter in 2013. I was released early on on electronic tag, um, and I was working with a friend of mine who had a company doing landscaping, and I worked with him for a while. And for three months, I just kept my head down. Um, I learned to trade. I started going to church every Sunday. Um, carried on picked up where from where I left off in prison so that carried on all my through prison and I kept it going and then my pastor took me aside and said in fact there's a bit of missed out to be fair there's, my fiance left me while I was in prison by email okay. um, oh, right which that must have been quite tra traumatic at the time as well with, uh... it was because I couldn't I couldn't, um, I couldn't do anything about it, you know, I was there and it was the hardest thing, it was harder than prison to not only lose your, your partner, your rock, but your best friend, it was, it, it was, it was all gone, so that was hard to come out of prison and carry on alone. That was the hardest part. But as time went on, um, as time went on, you, you seem to, sorry, man, you seem to 
No, it's 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 what it's, it's it's you know it's emotion in it. It's it's real, you know. It's um, it's uh, talking about your past, which is uh, which is always um, you know, it's going to bring up. We're talking about these things. It's bring up emotions, and and hopefully people watching this as well will um see the the effects that um, you know, th th this has on people as well. You know, um, it's it's life. It's real, and um, yeah, yeah, and, and I can you can I can. Uh, Sim sympathize with that man and uh like it must have been very hard at that time to not only that you've you've gone through all that but you're you, someone you're most close to as well is is then taken away from you um as well you know so you must feel uh, um yeah a very a very it must have been a very low time for you you know um and um yeah so 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 coming out so so moving on from 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 that and then you're then released from you've You've been in prison. Um, you've you've um, you've had your struggles and stuff in prison. Um, you've lost y your partner uh, as well now, and um, and then you've um, yeah, and then you've been released. And and uh, how did how did what was life like then? And what was um, what was your what did you have a plan? What was what was the? I had, I had no plan. Um, I had no direction. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Um, I didn't know, I didn't have a clue on where I was going to go. So I was still living at my mum and dad's at this point. After learning the trade with a friend, a, a, a childhood friend that had built up a business, I was working with him. And I, I claimed for, <clears throat> I claimed for a PPI, which gave me a bit of money to buy a car. So I bought a car. Um, and then, within a few months, I um, I was leaving the gym one evening, and uh, I had a car crash that almost killed me, um, broke my neck, I broke my back, oh, so I couldn't walk. Um, and I thought prison was bad, but when you've played football all your life and you've done what you wanted to do and you're looking up at a ceiling. Um, a couple of hours ago, he was in the gym, and and now I'm looking at the ceiling. I can't move. I'm surrounded by beeping monitors, and um, unless someone looks over me, I can't reckon the time of what's going on. So I spent two days in in hospital, um, just looking up at the ceiling, asking myself questions. Like asking God, why have you done this to me? You know, I, I give myself to you that before I went to prison, and so far, all you've done is take it away from me. You, you've literally, you took my, you took, you've took everything from me, and now I can't move. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I don't know what I don't know what you want me to do. Um, but do you know what, Jay? He he re, he re, rebuilt me into a guy. That could take the responsibility of what I'm doing today, and the reason why I've took time out of my day to talk to people like I'm doing today to try and tell people that no matter how bad it gets, trust me, I've been there. Just don't abandon your faith. Don't abandon. Don't abandon yeah. the dream. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And. Uh powerful message there man and pow powerful stuff as well um it's um yeah it's it's, it's unbelievable you know like the uh y and it sounds uh, you, you've been through all that and then like i said lose, losing your partner and then coming out of prison and then that and these questions are going to come up exactly like that like why me <laughs> why what is what more do i have to do to to uh to try to, to try <laughs> to get cool. on you know um and um yeah, there's a uh, yeah, there's a lot of like questions that must be going around your head um, at, um, at that point as well. And uh, how how long did that take to recover in in hospital as well? I was in hospital for about four or five months, and then I came out with this cage around my head. Um, so it was just little goals, then. it was goals on put my own socks on, um, being able to stand up. Um, to probably to walk to shot with my dad. Um, little goals, man. Put goals that yeah. got me to where I am today. And would you say the, would, 
Yeah, sorry. Sorry, man. One thing I didn't do was I didn't sit at home all the time for the first two days. I really did cry and I just felt sorry for myself. But after I got that out of the system, yeah. I was like, you know what? I need to go to the gym. And my dad was like, what? And I was like, <laughs> can you take me to the gym? Um, so for an hour a day, obviously for the first week, I was getting some weird looks, man. Um, yeah. You know, cause that'd be the last place that people would expect to see me. But I was training my mind. I was training my head. I was training my thinking. Um, because in my head, I was already back in the gym. Obviously, I wasn't lifting any weights, but I was already back in there. So after a while, people will come over and ask me what had happened. So I tell them. Um, and then I just sit and watch people train. So when it was my turn, yeah. I'm already in the gym. I'm just you're not already, lifting weights. You really do. Yeah, but you're I'm training this. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, and it's it's a very powerful uh, tool you've got there that, you, that everybody's got that they're walking around with in in you know in in the skull <laughs> stuff like in their is their brain is the most powerful, mm-hmm. um, it's the most powerful tool and most powerful arsenal that you've that, that a human has has got you know and it's uh, incredible what you can do when you put your mind, um, you put your mind to it you know, um, like uh, they do say that as well didn't they when you're um, if you even watch people working out, it can release, you know, the, the endorphins and stuff in your head. Endorphins. That's my excuse yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, um, so so you started to build up. So it goes back to that that conversation in the prison, didn't it, with the, with the fella who was telling you to work out as well. Yeah. Um, it comes full circle to that as well, doesn't it? You know, of um, of then finding at the end of the day, Jay, it's it's it's, it's staying true to who you are. Um, yeah. The reason the reason I ended up in there, being in there, was because I didn't stay true to who I was and who I was brought up by, and you know, and it led me off the track. And but like I said before, before we started recording this podcast, everything happens for a reason, man. And even how hard it was at the time, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world now. So so when you um. So when you kind of built yourself up and stuff like that, and you got back on your, on your feet, so do you still? Sorry to just go back to that. Do you still suffer from from symptoms today from that as well? Yeah, there's there's um, a few mornings where I get a stiff neck or I will get a few headaches, um, but apart from that, I, I've pretty much made a full recovery. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice one. It's good to hear, man. Excellent. You see, it's so many people. Like I work with. Um, a lot of people in what I do as well with um, kind of, uh, um, you know, the different disabilities and stuff like that, that disabilitate their self to, to play guitar and, and play. And, and so many mm. inspirational people that are that, that, that will actually play with a, with, with a disability and play with, um, you know, I've got one guy that's not, I can only use one hand and stuff like that. And he, um, oh. and, and, and the way that he, the way that he plays, um, and I, hopefully I'll be interviewing him soon as well. But the way that he plays... That'd be, that'd be, do you know what, though? That would be, that'd be pretty awesome to watch, personally. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it goes back to what you were saying with the, the limitations, of, you know, um, kind of, and your mind, your strength of your mind of, of building yourself up. And Because we, we, we all do it, don't we? You know, we get days when we're just like... Oh, I just, I just want it. I can't, I can't do it today. You know, I can't, I can't turn it on today. <laughs> you know what, so though, mate? You know what? Yeah. Every, there's most days where I, I wouldn't say question myself, but I wouldn't say, "Am I really doing this? Um, can I, can I, um, can I really make this?" And um, yeah, I trust, trust me, mate. I, I, I question myself all the time, but whenever I get to that stage and um, I start getting flustered and. I can't sleep. I'll just pray, which I didn't do before. And I'm not saying it'll work for everybody. Um, um, you know, if it works for you, awesome, because I guarantee you it's real. But try it for the right reasons. Don't, don't, don't try it for the wrong reasons. Like having little goals when I break my neck and my back. You've got to have goals, but achievable goals. Otherwise, it's pointless. You, you won't get anything from it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like I said, you said turning to faith and stuff and having faith in yourself. And like you said, said the truest things, people have um, can find faith in 
many different things as well is the the word you know faith um, we can break down that the word faith but ultimately for some people might you know meditate um some people um do yoga some people what find whatever's good for you <laughs> i tried yoga mate and i fell asleep man honestly oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> So get me too seriously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are falling asleep a lot. <laughs> cool. Now you got to bring that book out on sleep, definitely. Make a fortune, man. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Right. So, um, yeah. So, so, how did the um, acting start then? How did the how did you get right, into acting, to acting? Acting started in. We we'll go back to 2011 uh, before we went to prison. Um, I'll drop it back. We'll drop back into there briefly because um, I was working in an office at the time and one Saturday morning, now this is how it all happens. This is where the ball rolls. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I was sitting on a bench in Tamworth Castle Grounds. We've got, we've got a castle in Tamworth and I was just sitting there eating the Greggs and a guy who was shooting a commercial the following few weeks for Asda, um, wanted local people in the advert and he asked me if I wanted to be in it. So I thought, do you know what? Why not? I'll try it. Yeah. So quite a long story short, I had an audition. I got into, I'd done the commercial and, and obviously I went to prison. So as quickly as it started, it, it ended. Um, so after 2011, um happened as I, I briefly explained just and up until about 2018 i think it was was it is that when it was grant um yeah it'd been about 2018 yeah. yeah 2018 um i went i i received an email off that very same person asking one question that would change the rest of my life. And it was, what are you up to? Um, I don't know how it comes through to my phone because he, he used an old email address. It must have been LinkedIn. Anyway, I don't yeah. I don't care how it happened. It happened. Yeah. And um, I just said, I'm pushing a mower. Um, I'm just trying to find my way. And he says, would you like another chance at TV? Um and I was like, really? Um, doing what? And he says, um, as the lot bank the ice, um, you'll be banked up abroad. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, no. Um, he says, and I, said, and I said jokingly, what will I be a police officer? And he went, yeah, um, you'll be um, an, American, <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> an American police officer and you'll be arresting someone that would be swimming across the Hoover Dam. So anyway, I went there and I did the I did the production and that's where I met Grant Crooks who's sitting with me today. Ah, okay, cool. Excellent. And, and he he he's been in the industry over fifteen years and we exchanged numbers on that on that shoot and when I came back, obviously I went back to work and he went off doing whatever he was doing at the time. So um, I sent him a message one day asking if he could point me in a direction of how to just become an extra and or do extra work. Um, so he helped me. He opened up a lot of doors for me. And fast forward to today, um, I can now say I'm a, I'm a full-time actor. I love the um, uh, the, the first casting there is a... Uh... Uh, banged up abroad <laughs> as well. <laughs> Honestly, mate, you couldn't, you couldn't have, you couldn't have wrote it any better. Yeah. Way, well, they the do so, say about the law of attraction and stuff like that, don't they? You know, you know so. what? If it's, <laughs> what I've learned, what I've learned on this journey, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So, um, I've done since I've been an actor full time. I've done Age of a Living Dead, um, which is like a, a US TV series. Um, I've done. Okay. Yeah. Coronation Street as a barman. I've been on the Fantastic Beast three. I've just finished Fantastic Beast with um, at Warner Brothers in Leavesden. Um, I've, I've, I've appeared on Cobra two with Robert Carlyle. Time with Sean Bean. 
I was in recently, It's a Sin on Channel 4. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've got a few more. I've been booked in with a film with Michael Caine next month. Um, so, yeah, Fantastic. it's pretty surreal. It, did you say you was in Doctors as well? Was it Doctors? Yeah, I'm a regular police officer in daytime TV Doctors as well. Oh, so a police officer there as well? I know, yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> Yeah, and you still like, uh, and you're cl- close with Grant as well, like you. Yeah, Grant Crooks is. Um, I wouldn't say he's just my best friend. He's like, he's my co-star. He's my best friend. Uh, if I need to know anything, that's the guy I'll go to. Um, if I'm unsure of anything, um, it, it, it's just he's the guy. He's the guy that I'll just go to, and he'll tell yeah, me everything. Um... That'll be okay. Do you think certain things happen to, um, like you said, when you got that message just out of the blue? Do you think cert- certain times we we get signs um, to 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 follow up what we should do, and um, and when you look back at it now, a hundred percent because I've never I've not I, I've not seen this guy since I ended up abroad, and um, I couldn't even tell you what his name was, you know, and. Just that one instance, that one message, that one email changed my whole life forever. It was like yeah. it was like it's like being on a track and someone just switching them points slightly and then off you go on a different direction. Yeah, and it goes back to what we were saying earlier as well in, in prison when you've got that those those few people in life that will have those impacts and it's, it can be the smallest thing. Uh, the guy you first met in prison, the the, the guy that sent you a message f- f- to do in the acting as well. Um, and uh, I suppose it's uh, as well is a, it's a message to people to, to act on these things as well. When you, when you start seeing the signs as well, you know, um, cause a lot of people, a lot of people won't notice them because yeah. they're either, um, what's the word distracted with the way the world is at the moment. There's that many, if spots or maybe is about people's lives and people losing jobs that become distracted and the amount of distractions that are in people's lives at the moment. I just don't want them to miss when God's trying to work in their life or their life is trying to be changed by something that you don't understand. Um, I nearly, I nearly miss, I nearly miss my chances because I was oblivious to, a different, a different way of life, a different living, a different level of living, and I'm just so glad that God literally broke me down to where I was in hospital. Literally broke me down, but He also rebuilt me as well into the person that's talking to you today. Cool, excellent. And what's the uh, the situation with with the family? All good as well now? Is it with the the um, family life and and stuff? Yeah, man. Um, my dad, mum and dad um, are still the best they can be. Um, health-wise, pretty fragile because they're getting older. Um, but all in all, yeah, I'm just trying to make everyone proud for the mistakes I made in the past. Cool, excellent. And what kind of um, acting do you um, get? look at? Just homing in on the actual craft of acting now as well. Like, um, what what how would you um develop that that um say if somebody wants to get into acting and they want to learn how to act and um because a lot of, a lot of the times some of these acting schools can be very expensive for yeah for, for families you know what like i wasn't well. i wasn't i wasn't trained and i've never said that i've been trained and i've never gone anywhere to be trained the, when i was at school we had uh, i'm sure we just saw you did jay we had um a little thing called work experience now that's right yeah but for me the only way i'm going to learn on how to be in front of cameras and how to conduct yourself is to be there so i wanted grant to point me in the direction of where i could gain this experience to see if it was something i I could do for one um you know and if i could actually hold my own in a world that i was never trained to be in so i did and while i was there no matter how big your role is, whether I was Grindel Ward's bodyguard in Fantastic Beasts or a shadow on the wall in um, All Creatures Great and Small, you know, I've done everything and in between. So 
no matter yeah. how no no matter how important your role is, um, do it to the best of your ability because you never know who is watching you at the time. Yeah, definitely, and it's great advice, man. Like, and and I I live by that as well myself. You know, it's uh, I I um do it doing the music and stuff like that. You know, you've played some. They call it the toilet scene, didn't they? You know, where you've played, <laughs> you're getting you're getting changed in the toilets and stuff like that to, to go on to gigs and That's it, man. Uh, all all those all those kind of ones. And you think, you know, it's got to be more. It's got to be more to this. And then something will come your way. You know, something will. If you, a lot of people then give up at that point. Um, and think, oh, I'm never going to get to that level. Um, you know, it's like just... it's like playing it's like playing football, man. Um, you're never going to score a goal unless you're in the box. You know, um, you've got to put yourself in the position. Oh, is that where you had to be? <laughs> I was always at the. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Though I'm a goalkeeper, man. So I was always okay. in the box. <laughs> it was always I, in I, the... I could I could just pick it up and not, <laughs> and not just kick it, man. So I had an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like 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 the footballers say, you've got to be in the in the in the area for it to happen. But you've also got to know what you want out of it, you know, because like I say, there's a lot there's a lot of work that people don't see behind behind closed doors. The travelling, um, the long days, um, the being out in the cold or being in real crap locations and dialogue to remember and there's, there's a lot of expense to start with um until you get to the position where you get the chances to become an actor because you've got to get the experience to get to where you need to get to um yeah to become an extract or an, an sa as we're called now um is so important i'd say to become an actor because it gives you an insight of how working from the bottom upwards. So if you can do the worst part of the job, then you'll easily cope with the best bits. So, so, um, so what's <laughs> the uh, what's the future looking like for you then, Paul? For um, what's your what's your goals now? Like you've achieved, um, um, you know, stepping into the acting profession. And what's your what do you have like um, goals now that you want to achieve? Well, the only thing I can say definitely say is that I've definitely found my career for the rest of my life my next stage my next goal that I want to achieve now is I've been in to in film and I've been the character in the film so I've also performed the stunts which was something I planned years ahead that I've done now so I plan to take myself to the next stage which is where a place called Spotlight which is where a lot of productions go for the main cast and that's the next poll I'm going to put myself in once I feel that I've got the relative experience and credit accreditation to walk in for, to walk through that door. But the door's already open or ajar, but I'm still not fully capable of hitting that mark all the time. Um, like I say, that no one's taught me to do this, so I'm still teaching myself on set by YouTube and and you know from what I can pick up off the main actors when I'm there with them, working with them, whatever advice they've got to give me at the time, I can either try it and it'll work. If it works, brilliant. If not, I'll have to find a different way. And do you um do you like, have you got any actors that you um like really really kind of um, admire and respect and respect the way that they. The what the one that springs to mind personally um, is the person that I've worked with recently. One was Jude Law. Um, he gave me some great compliments on stage, but something which I can take away with me, and it's something that has stayed with me forever. And I've also worked with Luke Goss. Um, obviously, I grew up listening to his music, but when I was on set with him, he took me to one side and and spoke with me for about half an hour, which was very, very poignant at that time because I didn't know if I was good enough to do this. But when he says I was, and I've got something there to keep pushing, um, I did. That's great. Excellent. That's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I think we we do need these people in life, don't we, we that we can kind of like look, uh, look to the, as an inspiration. We all take inspiration from... So, so what would your what would your um, advice be 
um, if someone's, um, you know, going through some bad time, like you, like yourself, you're someone that's gone through a lot um, that we just spoke about and, and you're still you've got a, a positive frame of mind and you're doing what you want to do um, in this, in this world. Um, what would you, what would your advice be for someone that's gone, going through a similar story or really struggling, struggling with, with life at the moment and, and a bit frustrated or whatever? What would your advice be there, mate? Do you know what, mate? The only, or whoever's listening to my voice at the moment, the only thing I can say to you is don't give up. I know it's the old cliche and you hear it time and time again, but if you give up, who else is left there to, to help you? You've got to, you've got to, you've got to hang in there because the only person that you can rely on in life is you. The only person that's going to be with you for your whole life is you. So if you can't accept yourself for who you are, and that's all your flaws and everything else, then you'll never, the outcome will never be any different. So what you've got to do is not only change your thinking, but Set yourself goals, daily goals, daily goals to make yourself a better person or make yourself act in a different way. Little goals that you can make achievable, but achieve those goals every day and don't stop believing that you can make it no matter what you choose, whether it's acting or being an entrepreneur or no matter what you choose, just give it your full ability, give it your full concentration. I never give up. Yeah, yeah, especially in this um, uh, society as well, is that, um, you know, like um, learning a craft and stuff like that. And, and it's so many people, um, so many people kind of getting frustrated as well of like kind of um, aspiring to be something because they see people on Instagram, you know, and, and they see they're living yeah. a certain life and stuff like that. What's your what's your take on, on, on that, the way the society don't, is going? With don't, don't listen to social media. Don't listen to what you see on a screen because I guarantee you the person behind that screen probably don't own the Ferrari that they're sitting in or the jewelry that they're wearing. It's all a mirage. It's not real. So stop looking at distractions because that's all they are and they'll ultimately fuel disappointment. Because when you, when you try something new, you will fail. But fail big, fail humongously, but move on. And don't be afraid to fail because if you never fail, you'll never succeed. You'll never feel the gratitude of success and it'll just bypass you. So don't be scared to think outside the box because the old IQ test was drawing a few lines. But the only way to draw them lines together was to go outside the box. So do it and don't be scared of doing it because the only person that holds you back ultimately is yourself. And, and, and also the, the criticism thing as well is like you will get criticism in life as well. You, know, you can't please everyone. Yeah, you can't please everyone. Like there's going to be people watching this that will that will 100% criticise this as well. You know, there's people in every single, um, it's developing that, that thick skin as well about you, you know, as well as I think it's... Um, I think it's an important thing as well. You know, people um, also are quick to say um, y y there's, there's some awful people that do trolling out there as well. But there's also the ability to take on criticism and 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 learn from that as well and and go forward. You know, um, but like I say, you've got to you've got to you've got to change thinking to be able to progress in in in, in any given walk of life, no matter what you choose. But like you've just said, you'll always get the person that will either be jealous or don't think you're good enough. And, and they will try and bring you down. But you know what? Whatever. Just move on. Yeah. Just smile yeah, at them. Smile at them. Don't be horrible. Just smile at them and, and just say, you know, I feel sorry for you. Move on. You can't please everybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, just, to, just to finish up then, have you got any kind of funny... Um... Or any stories on being on set as well of, of what you've done? Because uh, you've, obviously you've done many, a lot many. of... Lo yeah. <laughs> Can you think uh, of one that comes the, to the, mind? <laughs> the, 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 the main one that comes to mind is I was on It's a Sin. 
Um, and we was on the last scene and it was raining, it was cold and we had to do a protest scene where we um, laid on the floor and we was, we was pretending to be dead bodies. So it was raining, it was on the last scene of the last scene of the shot of the shoot and uh, it was laying down and then I felt my phone vibrate and I was like, no, don't you dare. <laughs> And then off it went. Um, and yeah, oh, no. just let's let's least to say that we had to do it all over again, and everyone was wet and cold, and we had to do the whole routine. Oh, again. yeah, to the whole thing. What was the director like? <laughs> yeah, it went mad. I, I couldn't guarantee you. Oh, no, no. But Is that you know what? It was a lesson, in... lesson, lesson learned really quickly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what, like, it's all about, isn't it? You know, lessons and, and stuff like that that you were. Uh, you know, the same thing when you're going on stage and stuff like that you know you um little little kind of things that you learn to to, to build up to uh, become more of a professional but there's um yeah it's great great like little I say, it'll always all these things all these things happen every day it's how you react to them is the is the key to it all cool excellent and um what can how can people um find you as well paul if they're interested in your story or your yeah. journey of, through acting Listen, if I can, if I can, if I can help or support you in the, along the way, and you want to come and find me, look at Facebook, uh, Paul Candlelands. I'm also on Instagram uh, as Paul Candlelands. Um, I'm on IMDb if you want to follow my productions and what I've been in. I'm also on YouTube, so if you type in my name, um, all sorts will come up, so you can enjoy some clips of me on there. Um, but if you want to drop me a message and if I can help or support you in any way, no matter what time or day, um, just feel free. That's great. Excellent. And any, what's the next project you got coming up? If you give any we, we're on, we're on, um, we're on Ip, Ip Chris Files with Michael Kane in April and hopefully I'll be on something in between there um, to do with Netflix, I think it is. So yeah, keeping busy, busy. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, um, thank you for so much um, for coming on today. Uh, stick around in a minute. We'll have a little chat um, after. But um, thanks. Yeah, thank you. It's a fascinating, fascinating story. And uh, hopefully people thank watching you. this can find some um, inspiration. And um, yeah, I wish you all, all the best with your, um, you, you know, your, your, your journey and stuff with, with acting. Likewise, keep, man. Likewise. Keep me updated, man. Yeah, man, with what you're doing, um, it's good to see you try and trying different things and succeeding so keep up the good work man cheers thank you thank you paul excellent and uh yeah thank you very much thanks for watching this first episode thank you